community indigenous groups and will speak about traffic encapsulation of Tor and mobile LT systems, autonomous LTE systems, encapsulating Tor traffic in autonomous LTE mobile systems. Thank you very much, Javier. Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Before starting, I would like to ask a question and see if anyone has read anything regarding mobile community mobile telephone project in Mexico or in Colombia. If so, please raise your hand. Okay, I see some people have. Several people who are here have. Now, I come from an NGO in Mexico called Community Indigenous Telecommunications Group. And these are rural and indigenous communities in Mexico in the southeast of the country. In the operational team, we provide support so that these communities can have mobile telephone service. I don't know whether in your countries there are locations where you, there is no connectivity, no calls, no messages, but with that aim, we have the internet providers. Many of us here are such cases, but the larger companies in Mexico, and I'll tell you the experience in Mexico, and also of the communities where we are and we are still working, the commercial telephone companies uh, had a requirement of 10,000 inhabitants, inhabitants in order to have a location of a mobile telephone service. This was about seven, eight, or ten years ago. Now this changed. The organization began its life in 2016. Prior to that, there was another organization promoting this, which is called Rizomatica. Now, this project had the goal of taking communication as a fundamental right. This was and remains the objective. This panel, this topic is a telephone, mobile telephone project, an autonomous project. And at the time, we were working for 2G, for telephone calls and text messages. This signal was not conveyed by satellite, by cable. This is originated in the communities, and each community has its mobile telephone provider. In Mexico, we have Telefonica and other companies, and we have a concession given to us that gives us the authorization to use the 850 megahertz band for 15 years. This is non-for-profit, namely to provide communication to communities. The people use telephones, mobile phones, but as time went by, we realized that people wanted to have connectivity for data with the outer world. This is what they wanted to have. Of course, some people just wanted to make telephone calls or send messages to communicate with their family elsewhere. But the majority of young people and children and other people, too, want to have connectivity and speed. We now have two communities with a LTE 4G communication system, which provides internet to uh, provide coverage. These devices are of the communities. We just provide support and legal advice, technological advice, and to a certain extent, administrative advice for them to manage the devices and resources. These resources are divided between the community and with the people in charge of emergencies and with contents, funds for contents. 
so this also includes the initiatives of the community to generate its own content. Now, what I'm going to share with you is a research project I carried out for my master's degree on security. With these devices, we can set up in any location of the world. This can be set up in any part of the world if we have the following hardware. These are radio bases that have card readers that are programmable. And I added a security layer to promote privacy and freedom of expression. This project is not mandatory. This is a proposal that can be provided to the communities so they can do things securely because, of course, nothing is secure in the internet. The software we use for distribution, we use Debian, Ubuntu, and Raspberry OS. Open 5GS is an open source project that allows to implement a 4G or 5G system. The radio bases are the ones that change, as well as some of the configurations. We work jointly together with the George Washington University, Mark Spencer and Sturgis, who were studying there and developed the CoLT project and the haulage packet, which is the prepayment system. And the network analysis with Warshak and Tor. The, architect, the architecture of a site such as this is not too complex. A computer, a computer for connection, connection to the internet, and here you have the router layer that has been configured, and that is where the traffic goes out. The traffic that goes through is Tor just encapsulates the TCP traffic. Then UDP is not going to be encapsulated. And here at the top, we have the transceptor. So this one over here is a Chinese device which costs about $5,500. And with second hand devices, the entire installation is much cheaper. And the mobile devices are configured. Well, this is a lab. This is the Chinese NB. This is a computer with Debian and Ubuntu and a Raspberry and a router. And this is the outgoing part to the internet. This is a voltage regulator. And this is a SIM that is programmable and is very cheap. This can be programmed. Now, the difference between 2G and 4G is that when 2G, the telephone does not authenticate the network, but the network needs to authenticate the telephone. So in other words, I can have a SIM card from any operator and I can connect. I authorize the SIM when I ask for the connection and then I connect with the following attempt. But in the case of LTE, we need to know some of the values, which if we lose these, then the SIM cards can be cloned. And well, this can be used for malicious purposes. Then there are some interesting things regarding this technology. With 2G, you can intercept SMSs, so there's a lot of information. And if you wish to look up more information, these are false 
connection points that can be used for oversight. Now, the important thing here, uh, the INC, which is the identification code for the SIM, and the key of the SIM is this here, and the OP, which is the operator's code. So if we have this and we add it to the database of the telephone system, this can be connected to your telephone. And of course, you can connect it to the internet. If you don't have internet, this can work, but you won't be able to browse. Now, in fact, we work with five megas for a community because the costs are very high. The costs in Mexico, I don't know in the other countries, but to take internet from the cities to these communities, these are very high, these costs are very high. Another option is to have a site that is local and with Starlink. So this allows us to have this system. This is the management interface of Node B. We have a pilot site with for pilot tests. So we can control whatever we have, whichever the amount of packets we wish. What are the disadvantages of the project? Well, connectivity, speed, this depends on what the internet providers offer us. In the communities, what we ask is to have the site prepared. When the project began, you went to the site, and this was about us setting up a radio base, and this allowed it to work because the devices belong to the communities. That is the resource that they have, and they obtain this in order to implement a service. This is one of the parts of the project, of the research carried out with enabled tower system. This would allow us to browse. This shows the traffic. In the case of Mitrotic, here we have the domain, you have Facebook. These devices convert LTE to Wi-Fi. Here it is blocked and you cannot open anything. If you activate the Tor, if you enable Tor, then traffic goes to one of the Tor nodes. We also verify that we are connected with a mobile phone and that browsing takes place with one of the tour services. This slide shows the following. If we revise the IP of Tor's node, we can check what node it is. We can use VPN, yes, we can. And this is, I don't know if you heard about the Tor circuit that has input and output, and these are not related to one another. In fact, in theory, they should not know who connects one to the other, or the one that comes previously. Well, they shouldn't know this. And in the VPN, if you are in a situation in which a company is blocked, for example, Telmex blocked the Tor services in some of the nodes about two or three years ago. And this had to do with someone who hacked this because he investigated that Telmex was blocking the roads to Tor. Now, what is the disadvantage of the autonomous system in 4G and with encapsulation on Tor? Although if I had 200 megas or one gigabyte per second in terms of connectivity, the limitation 
would be the speed that the tall circuit provides. The test showed that this was 200 megas and this dropped to an average of 6 megas. And for a telephone network, this shouldn't be an adequate service. Now, on my behalf, this proposal also had to do with the following. You have Microsoft with Edge, for example, started to provide free VPNs in its browser because we cannot offer connectivity. And those who wish can just click on a button and then they get the connection through Tor. So this proposal could also be used so that if the telecommunication companies say, well, I want to browse through Tor, whether they charge for this service or not, but the decision should be made by each person. So we can put the provider's name on the SIM cards, and the telephone then detects or will show the provider's name. As to the speed and the location, here is, I see that uh, connected to a node in Frankfurt. Here, the PLM is the country code in uh, Mexico is 33407, and uh, the uh, upload will also be limited even if if the speeds are large. And. Even if we had very high speeds, the limitation of the speed uh, is established by the node. Now, another proposal is that the more nodes in the countries, the faster the connection will be. That, that is one of the proposals. And also, as now, these are pilot uh, uh, tests in communities of 19, 50 users, but, but the drawback is the legal issues that we've had, because we were assigned, in addition to 850 as a frequency, they enabled us to have a frequency of 900, that is not a common frequency in Mexico and and the mobile phones do not allow you only only the new ones uh, with no uh, uh, tethered account uh, enable you to to con to uh, link to those 900 megahertz networks the, that is one of the problems that we've run into and in Colombia too in Cauca we've worked with uh, uh, 2G and 4G uh, uh, mobile phone uh, networks, but there's always a legal battle involved. This is one of the disadvantages that we've noticed because it's a process that can uh, take months or even years. We had a problem with taxes because they were charging us. The concession allows us to use in Region 7, Oaxaca, Veracruz, Chiapas, Guerrero, and Puebla. Those are the five states that we were allowed. But we were about, there were about 12 of us for the entire region. So four technical people, four of the social area, and uh, two administrators of the organization structure. So what we've had to do and what happened there in, in that experience is that we were being charged as the commercial companies for a municipality where we cannot be in places where there is already commercial telephone, uh, but they can and they can install themselves there. So we were being charged uh, as the municipality in San, Cr San Cristobal de las Casas in uh, Chiapas. We couldn't go in, but uh, there was a community, a small community that belongs to the municipality, and we were being charged as if it were the entire municipality. So And so we went to court, and 
we succeeded with the Supreme Court of Justice. We, we reached the Supreme Court of Justice, so we were exempted the payments, but it took us two years until they told us that we uh, didn't have to pay taxes because it was not for profit, but the idea was to support the communities. And it was all a more uh, it was more meant uh, to uh, preserve the right to communication, and 4G is the right for uh, information. But the idea is just to take internet services, and that's it. So we are trying to evangelize. Somebody was talking today. Yeah, they use that word, evangelize, and uh, it's, it's like raising awareness of using the internet properly, but also being aware of the implications because we are hyper-connected. So our devices are sending uh, data constantly. And that is also another important thing that we're trying to promote. We want people to be aware of the risks entailed by being connected to the internet. So, this is what I wanted to share with you. This is the project of LT that may be installed. If we didn't have the permit and if it were up to me, I'm a technical person. If I had the capacity of uh, uh, using this uh, everywhere I would use it, but we have to abide by the regulations, even in terms of connectivity. So we have to fight step by step. You can reach uh, distant places. I don't know whether you have any comments or doubts. We have some remote questions. We have a remote question. Good morning. What has been done with ISPs when they block Tor? These are we, a lot of uh, bureaucracy. You have to take many steps. You have to send evidence. That is what we had to do here in Mexico for the, those bl uh, blockades to be released. Excellent. Thank you then, Javier, for your presentation. A big round of applause. So now we have another presentation that will be online. Graciela Vecchi 